In this episode of If You Say Show, we go to Carl Uccio to meet up with Wellington artist and sculptor Carl Gifford. Christelle Flimmer gives us a rather interesting review of the 2009 National Drawing Award. Tony Sherrado has his eyes set on the mainstream media's coverage of the War on Terror. We get bruised and battered, checking out Wellington's first ever roller derby match. And we take to the streets for some public opinions on a whole range of juicy topics. That's all coming up on If You Say Show. Said Hamlet to Ophelia, a sketch I'll make of thee. Now, which pencil shall I use, to be or not to be? And shall it be a likeness, a portrait of the face? Or should it be more abstract, where each line contains a trace of essence of my subject? I really need to think. Drawing can be like that. Pencil, pastel, ink, paper. It must be A4. But what about the weight? 80 or 100 GSM? And what's the fate of my drawing once completed? Will it win me an award? Will the judges like it? How do I strike that chord? Up the stairs in Cuba Street, there was a visual feast. The National Drawing Award. Yum, yum. A rather odd-shaped beast. 365 drawings. Some were great. But all revealed that drawing's in a rather healthy state. I liked self-portrait as a dog waiting for the stick. Sketchy, linear, alive. It captured in a tick the essence of the doggy. A slightly different sketch lampooned what men might long for. A dog, not playing fetch, but stretching flexibility. A cartoon, nonetheless. It made me laugh a little, and that counts as success. I liked the walking drawing, the smudgy sketchy line, and the concept was quite clever as it managed to combine some philosophical musing on the notion of the trace and of motion capture. Each wiggle is a pace. Amy Wybrow sketched a church, more realist than real. The sky was grey, the stone was cold. It truly made one feel you could reach out and touch it. It sent shivers down my spine. Now, if a drawing can do that, it's something mighty fine. Tuatara and Kete was perfectly realised. Realistic, fabulous. Although somewhat despised by the tyranny of the abstract, one point must be noted. The representational drawings had the numbers. They were voted number one, both merit awards, and the audience choice. If you think drawings of a thing, you would have said, rejoice. It's the comeback of the real, hurrah, things can be drawn as they are. A bird can be held in your hand. As a drawing, it was grand. The shopping trolley story had me captivated. Moving as an exercise is somewhat overrated, but to do it with a borrowed supermarket shopping trolley is to raise the exercise to a form of folly. Catherine MacDonald lived to draw this epic feat. I kind of wish I'd seen her push her trolley up the street. Understated, simple, so beautifully drawn. There were so many drawings, just a few that made me yawn. One had to look and look again. The simpler sketches in the main worked The salon hanging style meant the drawing could beguile if it spoke out loud and clear. Some drawings were quite austere. Casper drawing a square. I liked it, it was rather spare. Chloe Master's snakes and ladders led you everywhere. It was up and down the page in intricate detail. Rebecca Rate drew just a hairpin, precisely, and to scale. And John Ward Knox, who won? I think he got $4,000. His work speaks to art and life, to social history scholars. If drawing is a theatre, the paper is the stage, and the marks we make become the plot, wherein we must engage the audience, the viewer, because the play is king, where we draw in the consciousness, the essence of the thing. 
said Hamlet to Ophelia, a sketch. Hmm, let me think. I think I'll draw a glass of wine and have myself a drink. Media Eye, Tony Shirado discusses the media coverage of the War on Terror. New Zealand itself has been infested, if you like, or, or at least has, has been, been visited by this whole, this whole phenomenon of, of a particular concept, terror and, and terrorism, being used to, um, to suddenly sort of make sense of things, to evaluate things, to categorise things and people and, and actions. And in a sense, if you start looking about looking at how this happened, how did, for instance, something which is in some ways as, as insubstantial as the war on terror, uh, which includes things like the invasion of Iraq for reasons that turned out not to exist, but also, for, for instance, in New Zealand, suddenly sort of going out and rounding up a whole series of people for activities which, which used to be sort of relatively minor or <laughs> misdemeanours which suddenly become terrorist activities. I mean, that, that sharp bottle you've got or that, that gun you've got stuck down the shed, you, you, know, you know, suddenly the legislation and, and the accounts uh, of those sorts of activities. Once you bring in the notion of these associated with terror and, and our activities are all about, you know, sort of combating terror, they're all about the war on terror. So you deploy a concept like terror, which moved around remarkably quickly and without much consideration, and it became a, 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 what we might call a master signifier. So if you wanted to justify anything, and everybody did, you would say, um, well, this is all about the war on terror. So uh, the Russians, for instance, could practice, effectively practice genocide in Chechnya, and the Americans could suddenly suspend civil liberties, and, and, and the Australians could do all sorts of things, set up camps and things, and put people in, effectively in concentration camps. Yeah. And, uh, and the British police could shoot some poor Brazilian who happened to be trying to get to a train. <laughs> and this could be justified because it was all about the war on terror. And it was very difficult. Once you allow this particular narrative and that term to go unchallenged, there is something, you know, called a, a war on terror and it is real and, in a sense, we'll use it any way we damn well want to. It becomes really, really hard to, to, to if you let it circulate and let it gain too much, uh, um, if you let it gain too, too much sort of solidity. Yeah. then anybody, power can suddenly start justifying anything it does in terms of it being anti-terrorist. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, uh, what you actually had is a situation in, in Iraq, we know, where the Americans said this was a war on terror. So they went and killed, you know, rep you know up to half a million people yeah. because of something which was never clearly defined or never explained. Mm. Um, in in Britain, they could suspend civil liberties. In New Zealand, they could suspend civil liberties. And all you really needed to do at some stage was to say, well, hold on, what's this about? Um, why is, is, is this taking place? What does this war on terror mean? Let's, let's look at the, the, kinds of, uh, the kinds of ways it's being deployed. The people who really should have been thinking about this term from the very beginning were media. And the media should have been saying, well, hold on, what does it mean if we say that uh, the Russians are, are conducting a, a, a war against terror in Chechnya? Yeah. Or what does it mean that, that the Americans are conducting a war against terror in, in Iraq? Or what does it mean when the New Zealand government goes and arrests a whole lot of people? Sure. And one of the things that really was really t quite spooky is that uh, this term circulated so freely had such remarkable effects. Silenced people, and you could see why. Uh, in, what the tactic that was used by Bush, but also used by um, Blair and others, and, and Howard and, and even Helen Clark to some extent, was, you know, clearly, you know, you, you know you, everybody would be against terror. Mm -hmm. So clearly you'd be in favour of what we're doing. Is there anybody here who's in favour of terror? Mm -hmm. In other words, you produce the situation in a completely oh, inappropriate yeah, way. And so it's very hard for people to speak against. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we all know that the media had lots of opportunities for actually pointing out the inconsistencies, uh, the, the shortcomings of this whole war on terror campaign. <laughs>